Tim, welcome back. Over a year away, I guess, uh, how good maybe does it feel to be here just on a fight week again? Oh, man, it, uh, it feels great. This is, this is where I'm in my, my element. Uh, I feel awkward pretty much everywhere outside of, you know, this arena. So it's nice to finally be someplace where I feel like I belong. Yeah, obviously a pretty tumultuous time in your personal life. Uh, I guess your decision to kind of share that with the world and open up, I mean, any regrets in that or happy that you did that? What, what's your take? Uh, you know, I got a lot of support, I guess you could say. So I don't know. I'm not happy or sad about it. I just uh, I felt like it was something that I needed to do. Um, and again, it wasn't it wasn't to take a stab at anybody. It was more for my own personal issues, I guess. And uh, it, it helped uh, at the time of finding out. And when I first left for Texas, I was like walking around at 128 pounds, like couldn't couldn't finish a practice without being injured. I was I was just frail. And uh, you know, here just the other day, I was 152. So my my weight's back up. My my spirits are back up, and uh, I'm able to actually be a good uh, training partner and a teammate for my team, which is important to me. I guess in some ways, was it good to, like, get that burden off your chest to share that? I mean, I don't know. People deal with tragedy and stuff all the time, right? And they just kind of hide it, and then they never really get to dress. I mean, in, in any way, it was just, like, putting it out to the world, like, almost helpful for you? It, it really was. Uh, the thing is, is, like, I was the only one wearing it. Like, uh, my ex and the person that she is with now, they were living in my city, dating, being cool. And everybody thought that we separated because... I don't know, she said that I wanted to force her to move to Texas, or she said that we separated because of, I don't even know what the reasons were, but it wasn't the reasons that were the real reasons. So then I would come to my city and where I live, where my home is at, and people were telling me, oh, I heard you and Gina split up because of this or because of this. And then every interview they were asking me, well, how's Gina? How, you know, how are you guys doing? And I had to, I was lying and making up excuses to protect these guys. And uh, every time I did that, it, it was hurting me. And uh, yeah, after it got out there, nobody was asking me anymore. You know, I was getting like, oh, are you going to corner Kevin Kroom in his, bare, his next bare knuckle fight again? And I had to be like, oh, no, you know, we're not really cool anymore. And, oh, no, Gina and I aren't really together anymore. And they would ask why, and I was, like, searching to make up excuses and lying for them to protect them. At the same time, that was hurting myself. And, and not, not even myself, what it was doing, it was making me – I was shelling up. I wasn't able to be a good dad, and I've been – I felt like not a great person before, and I felt like not a great fighter before, but I've never not felt like a great dad. So uh, that was something that I, I had to change. I had to change for myself, and I had to change for my daughter. And after releasing it and getting a bunch of support, which, you know, I don't know if that's what helped or just getting it off my chest, but I'm, uh, I'm good. I'm feeling like I'm back to my normal self again. That's awesome. Well, the relationship with the daughter obviously means most, but I guess the relationship with the sport, like, was that tough at all? Because like, obviously that's so much of your – professional life as well was there any party that was just like I don't know if I want to be around this sport anymore yeah you know it wasn't that I didn't know if I wanted to be around the sport I just didn't know if I was going to be able to handle it I, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to stay in Kansas City with my team and train like Zach Cummings has a gym there now and you know I've cornered him in the UFC he's cornered me in the UFC uh, Trey Ogden has a gym in Kansas City now and and we've been close for a long time those are places that I felt like I would have maybe been able to train at but you know those guys still go there and train or live there. And I just, it was one of those things where I was either going to end up hurt or hurting somebody else or getting in trouble. So uh, I was just lucky enough to, uh, to be able to have a spot to go in Texas with uh, Chris Brennan and Next Generation Mixed Martial Arts. It, it kind of saved my ass, really. What's that relationship been like? Because Chris Brennan, uh, I mean, maybe if people aren't old school, you know, might not know who he is, but obviously the things he's accomplished, he's carrying on the lineage as well. But I guess what's it like being there? You know, how's the adjustment been? Uh, man, it, it's unreal, and, and you know he's a legend in MMA. Um, the the real fans know that, but uh, this is the first time in my whole life I feel like a professional athlete, and I feel like me giving ten percent of my purse and everything that I make to a guy is uh, well warranted. He uh, he lets me live in his beautiful house. Uh, all my meals are made. They have somebody making all my meals, laying out my supplements, my my schedules laid out. They have a routine in the morning, and uh, you know they don't drink, they don't smoke, they go to bed early. Like everything is done, really, really right and tight and like I need that I need that military style like somebody standing over me telling me what to do I, I crave that and if I have that you know I'm, I'm gonna do good things and I'm lucky enough like I don't have to ask for anything they just do and um, I, I'm really blessed to, to be able to have that the matchup does it mean anything to you I mean it seems like part of this is just like let me just get back in there and fight I don't give a hell I don't care who it is yeah so originally it was Alan Nascimento and then it changed uh, to some Russian guy who had visa issues and then it was back to Alan Nascimento, but at a later date. And I told him, like, I can't, 
I can't fight at a later date. Like, I want to go back and see my kid. I, that's been the hardest part of this. I've been six weeks, you know, I'm going back and see my kid once every two or three weeks. Like, she's always been with me. Her and I moved to Las Vegas when she was one. Uh, just the two of us. She's come, comes to my fights, come to my fight camp. She used to live at the PI here pretty much whenever we were here. Um, so to be away from her was really hard. Um, then they said they had an opponent for June 3rd, and then it went back to, no, it's Nascimento on June 24th. And um, after that, I was like, hey, if that's the case, I want to be guaranteed my show money when this guy pulls out again, because I'm not going to wait around for this guy to pull out again, because I had a feeling that he was. Um, they said, yeah, that's fine. And then a couple hours later, they called me and said that I got a Victor Altamirano on June 3rd. So as far as the matchup goes, I couldn't pick a better stylistic matchup for me. It's, uh, with Nascimento, I was going to have to fight reserved and, and fight a boring fight. And I don't like that. Uh, with, with Victor, I can go out there and be 100% Tim Elliott and have a good time. I think I saw at one point during this layoff, like you tweeted, like, why am I still in the rankings at this point? Like, was that, was that you, like, just, was that maybe being in the depths, like being frustrated, or did you really feel that way, or what was that about? Well, I mean, I know it's based on activity, and I haven't fought in almost two years. Like, well, I just was wondering, like, what are these guys doing? Like, are they, they just keep me in there just to have me in there? I mean, it's nice, but uh, I just assumed after a year layoff, like, I would, you know, be out of the top 12, 13, 14, 15. I, I just was surprised, and mostly on Twitter, I just like talking shit, so it's easy. <laughs> Last thing for me, I guess. Uh, man, Talk to me about where you feel like you are in your career, right? You have had to laugh. You had had to deal with all this personal stuff. Is it more about, like, let's just get through this fight and see what happens? Or are you, like, refocused, re-energized? Like, where do you feel your career is going? Oh, man, I've never been more excited, really. Uh, again, I'm getting older. I'm getting maybe a little bit slower. My cardio may be a little bit uh, not, you know, up to par from what it used to be. But my skills and my technique and my fight IQ and my, my coach and my team is at an all-time high. So... I'm never going to be able to out-train these young guys. I'm never going to be able to outwork these young guys. But what I can do is I can out-game plan them. I can, you know, I can, I can do my diet, my nutrition, my morning routine. I can do all that better than everybody because I have a coach that's forcing me to do that. So uh, it's really, you know, I'm feeling like a professional athlete. I feel like I'm in the NFL. Like uh, I'm, I'm taking care of my body. I'm not drinking no more. Um, I, uh, I'm doing everything right for a 36-year-old guy fighting a bunch of young kids. Hey, Tim. Yes, sir. Um, were you surprised at how much support that you got after you released your personal um, news? Like, it, it seemed like the entire MMA community was, like, is, is like backing you. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, the MMA community can, can be kind of mean and kind of cruel. Uh, so I got a little bit of that. But for the most part, everybody was really supportive. And uh, I ended up pulling the post down, I think, after 9 million people went across my Twitter. But... Uh, the, the support that I was getting was great from the MMA community, but a lot of it was guys who had went through something similar, not just being, you know, cheated on, but, like, even on their wedding night, like, and I was surprised at how many people, and after reading hundreds of that, you know, and people telling me, like, you know, it's going to take this amount of time or this amount of time, but you're going to get better. It's going to end up being a good thing for you. It actually made me feel better, and, uh, yeah, honestly, I, I don't know if I would have made it to the fight without – you know, feeling better because where I was at wasn't a good spot. You said that uh, you're currently on a bad luck gym streak. Um, are you? So are you hoping that this this is going to be your new uh, good good luck one? Yeah, man. Uh, well, I'm putting everything into this gym and everything into this team and everything into this coach. And I I told Chris Brennan I was like, I moved to Las Vegas to train with Robert Follis. He killed himself. I was living at his house. I moved to Kansas City to train with Glory MMA, and the FBI shut the gym down. So I was like. I hope you're ready. And he said, uh, you know, he's like, I like a challenge. So here we are, and, uh, you know, we'll see. And then just finally, just with this training camp, and, like, you said that your daughter is in a private school. So, like, going forward, are you just going to come out to Texas, or are you looking to, like, maybe bring your daughter out to Texas as well? Uh, at first I thought I would try it out and see. Um, but after being there, I feel like that's got to be the place for me. Plus, um, and I asked for this, but uh, Chris told me, like, he don't want guys just coming in just for camps. And it's not fair for me to come there for a camp and have the team help me and me not be there to help them whenever, you know, I'm out of camp. So my goal is to, to find a spot there, win this fight, find a spot there, buy a house, and, and take my daughter out there. Um, you know, this is – I put my daughter in kind of a hard position, but she's eight and she's well-adjusted. And I asked her, I was like, do you want to – do you want to stay in your school with your friends that you have here, or do you want to come to Texas with me? And she said right away, like, I want to go wherever you go. So 
that's that's what we're going to do. That's the goal anyway. First of all, awesome that your daughter said that. That must have been a lot to your tweet itself. Um, I've, I've tweeted some stuff that's got a big reaction. I know as the notifications come through, you're a bit like, oh, shit, what have I done? I've never had 9 million people look at my tweet. Was there a moment when you put it out there that you're like, oh, shit, I shouldn't have done that? Or was it the moment you put it out there, you're like, oh, finally, relief? Uh, you know, I kind of went back and forth on it. but And I don't know that it was the right thing. But for me, it was the right thing. And again, it was, it was not to try to hurt anybody else. It was 100% to try to help myself. And uh, I didn't know if it was going to hurt or help, but I knew the position that I was in and how I was feeling that it wasn't going to be good. I was, I was going to wind up in jail or, or hurt or, you know, even worse. So I don't regret anything. Um, but again, I don't wish any hard feelings on anybody, uh, especially not Gina. Like, I, I love her. Like, I still love her and I care about her, but like, I just can't be in her life or can't have anything to do with her. And you know, it is what it is. I commend you, and thank you for answering these questions. I'm sure it's a bit awkward and not great. <laughs> hey, Tim, just one over here. Um, I know you said there's a lot of guys that have reached out to you that have kind of been in a similar situation or dealing with mental health issues. Um, what advice would you give guys that are, you know, having relationship troubles or dealing with mental health issues? What, what kind of advice would you give them? Man, especially for fighters, I know it's hard to, to ask for help or, or to talk to people, but for me, that was the, you know, and, and I didn't even have it in me to really ask for help. I just put it out there, and then people offered the help. And uh, surprisingly enough, it, it helped a ton with uh, other people's experiences and stuff. And then not only that, the MMA community, like uh, Lando Venata messaged me on Twitter, like, you know, he's my favorite fighter to watch. He, and I don't know if he knows that, but... He sent some words of encouragement that really helped. Uh, Chris Levin messaged me. Like, I had, like, legit fighters and fathers and, and husbands, like, coming to me and telling me. Uh, I'm Sean Strickland just tapped me on the shoulder and gave me some words of encouragement. I was like, holy shit. So, like, uh, I don't know. It's all been positive, And, you know, I don't think I would have got the, the help that I needed without putting it out there and, and asking for it. And, and I put it out there, so technically I was asking for it. And... Just, uh, you know, it's, it's hard for a man to ask for help, especially a fighter. Like, you're supposed to be, like, a certain type of guy. And, you know, I was weak. I was weak in those moments. And, uh, you know, I'm a soft dude, like, outside of the cage. Like, I'm sensitive. I'm, I'm an emotional person. Uh, it's just who I am. And I, I care about everybody, like, the people that I don't know. And I can't help it. So, uh, you know, I, I take shit personally, and I take it to heart. So uh, it was uh, devastating. But, again, I had so many people... So many people give me positive information that it's easy to go past and, and, and shuck off the bad, the bad ones. So uh, that would be my only advice. Thank you, guys.